On September 28, 2018, the island of Sulawesi, which is part of Indonesia, was hit by a catastrophe of enormous proportions. The cause was a huge 7.5 magnitude earthquake with epicenter in the mountainous region of Dongala. The tremors caused a local tsunami and several deadly mud floods broke out from inland, causing big losses on lives as well as property damages. I will try to explain why this earthquake, which was not so dramatically strong, caused such a destruction. Friends, welcome to the new video on the Top Topics channel. There are several peculiarities of this catastrophe. First of all, it is atypical that although the epicenter of the earthquake was on the mainland, a tsunami was triggered. In addition, the movement of the Earth's plate were horizontal under the sea, so there was no lifting of the water column, which is one of the basic conditions for creating a tsunami. The sciences finally came to a clear conclusion, an underwater landslide. Although the earthquake was quite weak, it spread it over a large area. According to the Indonesian Technology Assessment and Application Agency, the energy released by the earthquake was 200 times stronger than the energy released during the nuclear bombing of Hiroshima in 1945. This surface intensity caused the subsidence of underwater rocks and triggered an extremely strong local tsunami, which struck the nearby mainland in no time. The landslide damaged a tsunami's warning detectors, which definitely didn't help. The scientists believe that after such strong shocks, there was a threat of maximum half meter high wave. However, the reality was a little bit different. At exactly 18.07 Central Indonesian time, a tsunami warning was issued in Palu and Dongala. Dongala residents were told to expect a tsunami ranging from 0.5 to 3 meters, while Palu residents were told to expect a tsunami of less than half meter. Calculations indicated that the tsunami would reach Palu about 20 minutes after the earthquake. Then the authorities made a huge mistake and the tsunami warning was withdrawn. Tsunami alarms have not been activated. At that time the Palu Nomone festival took place in Talis beach and most of the festival participants did not realize that a deadly wave was rolling on them. Eyewitnesses even said that some people were still walking on the beach in Palu when it was suddenly hit by a tsunami. In addition, the city's geomorphology turned against the city, as the city lies at the end of a very narrow bay, which led to a further intensification of the effects of the tsunami. The city was hit by a wave up to 6 meters high. The published footage shows that the wave approached at a tremendous speed and literally swept away everything that stood in its way. Since the source of the tsunami was not far from the coast, the wave didn't lose any energy and arrived within a few minutes in full power. This event is further proof that these local tsunamis have the most dangerous and completely unpredictable character. A similar tsunami struck Papua New Guinea in 1998. We will address this event in one of our next videos. The Sulawesi tsunami has swept away or damaged 70,000 homes. Tens of thousands of people had to go to the emergency centers. In Palu, the capital of central Sulawesi, one mosque and the main part of the Antapura hospital collapsed. Palu Statura Mall, one of the oldest shopping malls in Palu, has also collapsed. The eight-story hotel, known as the Roa Roa Hotel, also collapsed. Most of the participants in the festival didn't survive the tsunami. The control tower of the local international airport was also swept away. The port of the city was completely destroyed and the cranes in the port were demolished. However, the fate of the iconic bridge in Palu became a symbol of destruction and above all, a demonstration of the terrible force of the tsunami. The bridge, called Kuning Ponulele, which was also the first arc bridge in Indonesia, was twisted and overturned by the wave, as if it were made of paper. The whole catastrophe was underlined by numerous mudslides that occurred inland. These mudflows are due to the liquefaction of the soil, 
which is a typical manifestation of a strong earthquakes and tsunamis. The mud floods destroyed thousands more houses and claimed thousands of lives. Survivors of the mud floods in the town of Petobu said that as soon as the earthquake struck, two meters high mud came out of the ground, which began to flow in all directions. The earth immediately changed into a liquid-like substance. Hundreds of houses sank into the ground and hundreds of people were drowned by a stream of mud. Of Petoba's 13,000 inhabitants, 6,000 are believed to have been buried in the mud. Indonesia's National Disaster Management Council said 2,050 homes were destroyed by mudslides on Petoba and a 180 hectare area was liquefied. The city of Balarwa almost disappeared. Most of the city's houses sank into the mud. The exact number is 1,747 houses. 600 people out of the 2,000 inhabitants died, while more than a thousand more were never found. Liquefaction has moved entire villages, hills and infrastructure in various directions by hundreds of meters. It was one of the worst liquefaction of the soil and mud flows in decades. For me, it is one of the most terrifying disasters of recent years. And even though it was not nearly as large as for example the earthquake and tsunami in Japan in 2011, the local impact was absolutely catastrophic. This tsunami claimed nearly 4500 casualties and another hundreds of casualties claimed inland mudslides. Reconstruction of the area continues and it will take many more years before the last trace of this terrible catastrophe disappears. Thank you very much for watching and listening and if you would like to support our research you can do it through Patreon. We are also on TikTok with the raw footages of natural phenomena. And Instagram where you can share your own pictures and videos regarding mother nature with our community. Thank you very much for watching and listening. See ya.